We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 14th House District, the Majority Caucus Whip, Representative Chris Coomer. Representative Coomer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. It's an honor and a privilege today for me to introduce a friend of mine who I've known for many years as your pastor of the day. Pastor Steve Brown is the pastor of the West Metro Church in Douglasville, Georgia. And uh, he's been in ministry in uh, Georgia for over 39 years, born and raised in the metro area and ministered here in the metro area for all of that time. Uh, his wife, Barbara, of 37 years, is not here with him this morning because she is a teacher at Douglas County High School and she's there tending to uh, those very precious children in that community. Uh, but I will tell you a couple of things briefly about Steve. Uh, he graduated from Lee University, same as I did, my alma mater, and he also graduated from the Theological Seminary in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, rather than listing all of his uh, professional accomplishments, I will just tell you two personal things that I know about Steve. One is that he's a person of character and integrity and that uh, as I've observed him over the years in high times and low times, he's been the same kind, humble, and considerate person in all those circumstances. And I'll also tell you that there is a theme that runs throughout all of his ministry, an overarching chord that runs through it all, and that is his love and compassion for other people, whether those are the people in his own congregation or people far beyond the walls, uh, all around the world, beyond the walls of his church, or what I think is probably the most interesting aspect of his, his time in ministry is ministry to other ministers who find themselves in difficult times and encouraging and helping those. So I ask you to, uh, I ask you to enjoy this time with me and my friend, Pastor Steve Brown. Thank you, Christian. It's an honor to be here today. I feel a lot like the young man who had preached his first sermon in his daddy's church. And his dad said, you know, you did a good job, but really you were just married to your notes. So study more and be prepared in a few weeks. My friend is gonna invite you to come to his church. He got there that morning and the place was packed, large group of people and he was very nervous. He had memorized his notes. So he decided to speak extemporaneously that day and. He stood up to announce his text from the book of Revelation where Jesus said, behold, I come quickly. And all of a sudden, he was so nervous, it was just a blank stare. He could not remember one thing, not the first word. So he thought, I will announce my text again and maybe some trigger will happen and I'll remember what I'm supposed to say. So he did that, behold, I come quickly, nothing reaches in his pocket, pinches himself. Now he's incredibly nervous. Please, Lord, help me. And so he decides once more he's going to announce this. He did it louder. And sure enough, as he said, behold, I come quickly, he wasn't oriented to the platform and stepped off the platform, landed in the front row in the lap of an elderly lady mic'd up so everybody hears this commotion and he's getting up and says ma'am I am so sorry please forgive me and she says young man it's okay I should have been ready you warned me three times you were coming <laughs> so it, it is a little nerve-wracking standing here today but I'm honored to be here and one of the reasons is because I know from my personal experience with representatives of this house, that you love this state and that you love God and that you love mainly the, the people in this state. So I wanna share with you this morning from the book of, uh, let's see, where was, oh yeah, John. <laughs> John chapter 13, verse 34. Here's what Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, and here's the kicker, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Greater love has no one than this, than he do what? Lay down his life for his friends. And so talking about love this morning, 
our love for him and our love for one another, our brothers and sisters. I was reading a, a book from uh, Chuck Swindoll, it's written years ago, uh, called Encourage Me. And he related a story about an airline, which Atlanta Airport was just shut down a few minutes ago because of the, the storm, but it was bound for New York. And when he got to the, the final approach, he realized that his landing gear was not engaged. He tried several things to make it engaged. He couldn't. And so he contacted the air traffic controllers, let them know, and they, they called the emergency people, first responders. They sprayed down the, the runway. And he's giving instructions to the people on the plane, as uh, pilots typically do in that calm, cheery voice. He let them know at each stage what was happening until finally he had to tell them, I want you to grab your ankles, put your head between your legs, and prepare for the landing. It's an oxymoron, crash landing. How do you do that? Anyway, preparing for the landing, and as they get down to a few seconds just before the plane is going to land, he comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, it's my obligation to inform you that according to the International Aviation Law of Geneva, that if you believe in God, commence prayer now. And so the plane landed, there was no one injured, only damage to the plane, and it was almost a non-event. The next day, a member of the family of one of the passengers called the airline and said, hey, what is this International Geneva thing about commencing prayer? And of course, it was no comment. And here's my question. Why is it that we always wait until the back's against the wall, the door's slammed shut? It's almost as if there's no way for us to do it that we finally begin to pray. And so maybe that's where you are today, as a group or as an individual. There are some things that we're facing in our country now, in our life, to where all we need to do is realize God loves me. Jesus said, love one another. Here's the beautiful thing, as I have loved you. And so he answers prayer today, not because of great faith or because of great behavior. He answers prayer today because he loves me. He loves you. And if you don't know him today, he wants you to. So I'd invite you this morning to uh, join me in a prayer as we pray for our state, for the leadership. And if we live in the New Testament, we... Um, we're mandated to pray for those who are over us, those who serve, especially in government. And so there's a church in Douglasville, Georgia, that prays for you every day, but especially on Tuesday morning at 930, we pray an hour for you. And so we love you and appreciate your love for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the awesome opportunity that we have as servants to serve this state we pray for our speaker and all the members of this house. We pray for our governor. And we ask, Father, for every school board, every participant in any leadership position whatsoever, whether it's the fire department or the police department, wherever. We ask you to watch over them and protect them. Our hearts go out today for those who are living in Harrelson County, for those in Bremen, Georgia. And we just pray for your protection over them. Thank you that you reach forth your hand and comfort them today. Thank you for reminding us this morning of the new commandment that you introduced us to, that we love like you love unconditionally, that we love the way you love eternally, and that we love like you love, regardless to a person's background, social standing, whatever, that we accept them and love them and walk with them. Touch this house today as they deliberate, bless them, and everything that they do. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen.